Throughout our lives, we absorb everything around us. The sights, the sounds, the smells, even our own thoughts and feelings. Thoughts are so embarrassing. That's not embarrassing. This is what we call memory. As we grow, our perspective changes, and we become subjective witnesses to our own lives. This creates a new, faded mosaic of our past, based on the memory of the memories. Ultimately, providing second-hand recollections that are often biased and incomplete. In After Sun, writer-director Charlotte Wells uses memory as a storytelling device, as we watch a childhood holiday through the scattered remembrances of Sophie. The image of her dad, so. Callum, crafted from her own fragmentary mosaic, is one that morphs before her own eyes the more she tries to remember, and the more she's now able to understand. The intimate approach of the film invites us to consider the nature of memory itself, its capriciousness and how inherent blind spots and perspective biases remove any possibility of objectivity, allowing space for heartbreaking pain and personal truth to emerge. By framing the story as a manifestation of Sophie's memory, Wells provokes the viewer into questioning the veracity of what we're watching. It quickly becomes clear that we're seeing not the Callum that existed in real life, but the Callum Sophie wants to remember. And as glimpses of the true man and his inner turmoil gradually infiltrate the narrative, it becomes apparent that we're witnessing a live reconstruction of Sophie's mosaic, as she observes her memories of her dad through the eyes of her adult self revealing the fickle nature of memory to be at once beautiful and haunting, and inviting us as viewers to consider our own childhood, questioning the very lens through which we observed our parents, the eyes themselves a biased observer. In the wake of personal tragedy or loss, we often find ourselves scrambling around in the darkness searching for tangible reminders of someone's true essence. Something intangible, something inimitable. Often, our memory fails us, but at times it protects us from that which is too painful. Memory, however, should never be considered historical artifact. What Aftersun teaches us is that memory is inherently poetic, and intrinsically personal. And through the subjectivity and messiness of our scattered mosaics, we often learn more about ourselves than those we're trying to remember. <laughs> Home video footage is peppered throughout the film, acting not only as a tangible reminder of Sophie's true experiences, but also as a powerful visual motif for the concept of memory. By its very nature, film of this type is both objective, in that it portrays true-to-life glimpses of reality, and subjective, in that the person holding the camera only chose to point the lens at what it was they wanted to capture. Often, what isn't shown on screen tells us more than what is. The shaky, raw clips act as an anchor point between Sophie's fading memories, moments of objective truth that serve to both ground and bring into question Sophie's retelling of events. But the very clips themselves are subject to interpretation. No matter how many times we watch or re-watch old home movies, we may uncover something new every time, depending on the mindset we're in when we watch them. In one sense, the DV footage is all Sophie has left of the real Callum, but as her understanding of her father shifts, so does her interpretation of the man she watches in the film. The narrative that connects the complex web of the tangible and the intangible is continuously morphing and changing, allowing us to constantly reframe our perspective and justify whatever we see with our own two eyes.
thus implying that the truth surrounding the images and objects we collect to remind us of the ones we love is also up for poetic interpretation. For better, or for worse. As the film progresses, we're presented with recurring images of a nightclub scene in the present day. A crowd of bodies in a small space, evoking an anxiety that seems to wash over Sophie as she recounts her memories. As she finally assimilates the truth and poetry within what she remembers, it's possible Wells is suggesting here that Sophie is coming to terms with her own inner turmoil and developing a greater understanding of who her father was. Old enough now to relate to the storm swelling beneath his calm surface, she's finally able to see the real Callum through the darkness, the flashing lights and the loud noises. A sign, perhaps, that she accepts her memories for what they are, something to hold lightly something to observe. As time marches on, we must accept that our memories will fade and recalibrate. But we can find solace in the understanding that what we do remember is a reflection of our inner selves. And we can find comfort in the truth that those we loved live on in our memories. As long as we have the capacity to witness them. As a waiter snaps a Polaroid of Sophie and her father, we watch the image slowly develop, becoming clearer and more defined as time passes. Symbolically, this gives us a sense that perhaps our true understanding of those people that we love takes time to develop. But as with any Polaroid image, that clarity will fade over time, gradually making up a smaller part of the larger, ever-changing mosaic that is our memory.